back to your Monday morning on your Feel Good Breakfast show. It's that time again when we talk about feel. We're going to talk about feeling yeah. tonight or this morning. <laughs> uh, listen, there's a certain kind of electricity that can flow through your body when you see someone that you are attracted to or perhaps you're in love with. Your heart beats faster, your face flushes, your palms start to sweat and your stomach could even, you know, feel like it's got butterflies on in, inside it. So uh, it all happens to you when, you when you've got those amazing feelings, isn't it? That's right. Well, yeah. you know what? It's partly because of all the hormones and the chemicals that flood your brain and your body when you are in love and it can almost feel like a bit of a drug mm. so we are talking about love and about biology is love about biology or feelings and how can you use science to make sure you have the most romantic valentine's day this wednesday <laughs> well love is certainly in the air and that's why we have our relationship relationship expert dr eve with us in the building to engage with your questions and comments our lines are open so please do give us a call that number is 021 Dr. Eve, always Hi. good to have you. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. <laughs> Happy so, Monday. So quickly take us through what happens to one's brain mm -hmm. and body when you experience those feelings of being in love and seeing someone that you are attracted to and you lay eyes on them and all of a sudden things change. You were laughing and now you can't the even... The earth disappears. You can't even put two words exactly. together. Exactly. You kind of go crazy. Uh, That's why it's called... Cool. Baba. Is that what it is? Yes, That's Ika lovely. Baba, I like I classes. like that. Yeah. That's like omnipotent. Um, it's called love sickness. Love sickness. It's called love sickness. Love sickness. It's called love sickness because we actually become ill when you go through those different phases of falling in love with somebody. So you start out, and for all of us, the beginning is as if you're a female, you've got this whole lot of estrogen with a bit of testosterone. For men, you've got this testosterone that drives you to seek out a partner, first of all. Then you'll look across the room and say, oh, wow. And not, we don't obviously fall in love with everybody. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously not, that there are certain people where there is this kind of chemical attraction that we feel. So straight after that, you then, your brain becomes absolutely alert and alive. And it feels like you're going on a cocaine trip that all you become absolutely flooded, your brain becomes completely flooded with a whole lot of different chemicals and neurotransmitters and hormones that happen simultaneously. So you go from that lustful feeling of your adrenaline, you then from uh, the estrogen testosterone, mm -hmm. you then go into the feelings that you described, Kat, of adrenaline, noradrenaline, and your heart beats faster and your blood pressure um, elevates. And then you get into these lovesickness feelings of insomnia, you can't sleep, you kind of feel nauseous, and then you go into like a place of serotonin. Your serotonin kicks in. You just can't stop thinking about this person yeah. all the time. You kind of listen to the music and everything that you think about relates back to that person. Then the dopamine kicks in, which is like kind of the addictive part of love. And that's when you feel, I have to see this person again. I have to be with this person because I want that feeling, like my fix. I want that it's like feeling. It's a drug. It, it is, is a like drug. A drug. And then that's like kind of going through your lust, then you go through your traction, and obviously if there is mutuality, then it's going to continue into spending time with this person, and then you settle into what's called attachment. However, and I'm sure there are many of our viewers who get stuck in lust, who get stuck in attraction without any of that reciprocity, and you get stuck there, and it is so painful. I want to hear about that pain. And then you move into attachment, and that's when your beautiful oxytocin happens. Oxytocin is released very interestingly when a mother breastfeeds a child. It's called your bonding hormone, and that's when the child and the mother attach and fall in love with each other. And this happens post-orgasm, where oxytocin is released in men and women to create and encourage bonding with each other. Once that's happened, the next important hormone is vasopressin, and we'll talk about that. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Okay, we're going to keep our lines open. 0214309881. Yes. We're moving towards Valentine's Day. What do you believe love is? Is it just a biochemical reactions, a reaction, or is it true feeling that you are They're genuine? No, there's nothing realer. Dr. Evil Bill. It's my feel good <laughs> well, from lovely aromas in the air to lovers in the air, as we approach Valentine's Day, Dr. Eve is with us on the couch. As we talk about the science of romance, and more particularly, is love a biology or is it just a feeling? Yeah. Dr. Eve, earlier you gave us a brief breakdown of the various chemical components that goes on in your brain when you yeah. go through the various steps of love. Mm -hmm. um, is it true that love at first sight is a thing? Yes. It, abs it? it absolutely is. I'm always surprised by how many people, when they 
when I work with a couple on my couch and they will say to me, we walked into the room, I saw him or her and I knew that was going to be my wife. And it transpires. There is just this electricity, this energy, this chemistry, whatever what one wants to call it, where two people can literally lay eyes on each other and feel that connection. Unfortunately, it could be that those people are married or attached to other people, but it definitely happens that we are absolutely attuned more to one person than we are to another person. And yet so, you know, arranged marriages work pretty well as well. And maybe some people are in arranged marriages and want to tell us about that kind of love, because that wasn't about neurobiology at all. That was some people setting you up to get married, and yet they will say, we are in love. Yeah. So love is kind of complex. It is very complex. Yeah. I want to get back to the love at first sight. When, yes. when for example, you say you have people come into your, into your office mm. and they say that, is it both saying the same, or is it generally yeah. the one saying, I, I knew this was the one for me? Yeah, it's always both people. Okay. saying they mutually, we've laid eyes, eyes on each other and from that moment on we've never been apart and they will really kind of climb mountains and cross rivers to be able to be together. When there isn't the reciprocity, that's where you get stuck in your lust or in your attraction and it feels like heartache. And I'm sure many of our viewers have had that experience where it hasn't been reciprocated yes. and it feels completely heartbroken because it's almost like the cycle of chemistry that needs to evolve gets stopped it's paused and that feels incredibly difficult for people because we want to see the organic process. It's how people are getting to hookups today and they're not allowed to catch feelings and they're not allowed to fall in love and yet there is this attraction or there is this feeling for each other and yet because of the culture today it's like we're not allowed to see each other and it feels you really... You suppress that. Exactly and it feels really heartache, it feels sore and then you end up with a heartache, not the love, the beautiful expression of love. That, that drug feeling that you exactly. said, that addicted feeling. You, when you left with it on your own, you've got to deal with that and that is incredibly difficult and that's, yeah, we'll talk about that later, heartaches. Yes, heartache. Well, I actually wanted to mm. touch on that because yeah. Dr. Eve, earlier you also mentioned uh, something you want to get into is um, when people think they're in love. Absolutely. So because of all these chemicals, they get you to believe and to make you feel as if you're in love. And then after a period of time, those chemicals recede after like about six weeks, maximum three months, and they definitely don't last more than 18 months, Zoe, and that's because of an evolutionary point, because in 18 months you're able to meet, the woman's able to fall pregnant and give birth, and then by then the man can leave, uh, she has her child, and so all of those chemicals dissipate. And then you're left with this thing of, you know, am I really in love with this person? The, one of the hormones that I find most fascinating is the one called vasopressin because this is released when two people spend a lot of time together and especially when they're in bed every night and they're having their bodies up against each other, just lying together in the same bed, there is a releasing of vasopressin which is an attachment hormone and people then believe that they're in love because they're spending every night together but it may not be in love. It mm. may just be because your bodies are saying, I'm attached to you. So one has to really tease out what's really love and what is just chemically driven, what's really lust, just lust, and it can stop there. Can we take it further? And what's healthy? You know, okay. what do we end up with? Well, Dr. Eve, we have so much to unpack. And like we said, love is a very complicated term yes. and uh, subject for today. But we'd love to hear from you. Those lines are open. It's 21 430 We'll be back with Dr. Eve shortly. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Espresso and Valentine's Day is two days away and we are focusing on love. We're asking the question, is love just a feeling or is it biology? Someone else suggested it's perhaps a decision. I like that. I like that as well. Yes, it's well, real. Yes. Well, Dr. Eve, we've got a caller on the line, Mushika, from Hanover Park. Good morning. Good morning to you. Morning. Hi. Do you have a comment or a question for Dr. Eve? I just wanted to know, if you are a married woman... And your husband tells you he loves another woman. Is that love or, or what, what do you call that? Can a husband love two persons? That's called like heartbreak for you, right? Yes. Your heart is broken. Mm -hmm. Does your heart, does your heart it, feel broken, Mashika? Sorry? Does your heart feel broken? Yes. Yes. And he's declared love for another woman. So fact yes. is, your question is, 
can he love another woman? Yeah, we can, all can love. Can he love? Can he love two persons? Yes, we can love two people. Think about. I don't know if you've got children, but think about friends. Even you love friends differently, and it doesn't mean you lose love for one because you love another. It takes a lot of courage for you to hold on to yourself now and not compare yourself to this other woman and to trust that the love he has for you is completely different to the love that he has for another woman. So the thing is, do you feel that he loves you? Uh, I, I don't think that love anymore. Have because you been, I can't see kids with him. Have you been together for a long time? 20 years. Okay, so it's a different kind of love. And now he's got all those crazy chemicals of falling in lust and attraction and love with somebody new. Yes. It can't be compared to the love of 20 yeah, years. Me. Yeah, so it hurts you. I mean, I think it's great that he's been honest with you about that. And now you've got to find a way to live with it or to decide, I want a different kind of relationship with you now. That's, that's your yes. challenge. But, but the thing is that he tells me over the phone when, when he is with the other partner. He can't tell it to me directly in my face. Ouch. That's the reason. Okay, so there's a lot of things that need to happen. And now he's moved into an open relationship. It doesn't sound like you're in agreement with it or he's, you've consulted. He's consulted you about it. But now there needs to be agreements put into place, Mashika. You need to be saying, we need to sit down and have some agreements so I'm treated with respect here. That's very no, important. Yeah. Love yourself, okay. girlfriend. Love Thank yourself. Thank you for the call. Thank you yes, so much I will for love call. myself. Good. Well, Thank our you number very much. Thank you so much for that call. Our line remains open. It's 021-430-9881. We will be back with Dr. Eve, and I would love to continue the conversation yeah. of, you know, how can you keep that feeling to last? You were talking about all these very various chemical components that goes yeah. on in the brain when you're in love. So don't go anywhere. Our lines remain open. It's my feel-good so well, we are back with Dr. E for one nice last talk as we talk about love. Is it just a feeling or is it biology or is it a decision that you have to make? I really, mm. really love that, Dr. E. Yeah. And, you know, earlier we had a caller that said she's been married for 20 years. Mm. Um, he, she asked the question, you know, is it possible for her husband to love two people? You said yes, it's definitely possible. But how can you keep that love drug feeling that you feel mm. in the beginning phases to last throughout the relationship? You just absolutely can't. As I said earlier, Zoe, there is a natural decline of those feelings. As we'd all be walking around kind of a little dopamine crazy and adrenaline junkies like blah, blah, blah. And unfortunately, there are people who want that and crave that feeling and constantly are looking for new relationships and struggle to stay in relationships because they miss that feeling, that high of falling in love, mm -hmm. and that leads them to quite out of control behavior, seeking that, that high all the time. So okay. naturally we want to evolve into a different kind of love, which is more sustainable, which is more grounded, which feels more committed, feels safer, deeper. it feels companionship, yes. it feels deeper, and that's you know, very beautiful. And then there is the temptation always of I'm wanting to get that feeling. And you know, you can't get that feeling from a new sport or from doing another hobby. The only thing that gives you that feeling is either a drug like cocaine or falling in love, which is why I, you know, I do want to mention the heartbreak of falling out of love, of how absolutely devastating that feels for people. And around this time of the year, I think a lot of people are feeling the pain of love lost mm. and heartbreaks that they have experienced or may be experiencing now. And I want to say to you, you know, accept and respect the fact that falling out of love is as traumatic as falling in love. Because falling in love is a trauma, and falling out of love is a trauma as well, because you lose all those feelings. Suddenly, you're back into memory of what it felt like, and your body craves those feelings and craves that person so much that you feel completely devastated at the loss of this person. So some tips if you are now struggling with this heartbreak situation, please don't keep idealizing the person. Make a list of things that you remember were not good for you about this person. So okay. you don't keep in the loop of feeling that you're still in love. Okay. Well, Dr. Eve, we have another caller oh. on the line. We have Anonymous on yes. the line. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. What's your comment or question for Dr. Eve this morning? 
Okay, good morning, Doctor. Hi, hi. Hi, I would just like to find out, I'm in a relationship for the last two years or going on three with someone who is double my age. I'm actually turning 32. The person I'm in love with is 62. Yeah. Okay. Would you consider that love in any way? Because people around me have different reactions when I do say, you know what, I'm in love with somebody um, double my age. Would you consider that love or think that this could be love? It sounds like you consider it love and that you feel you're in love, right? Yes, absolutely. Then you don't need an expert like me to tell you what you're feeling. Your challenge, your challenge is to be able to ward off what your social circle are saying and to be able to hold that space with this person in the moment, not thinking about the future around age and, and the difference of age. For me, the most important thing around here is that there is what I call equity in relationship, that you don't feel intimidated by age and that there isn't a power differential where he has more power in the relationship because of age or maybe socioeconomic factors. You just want to hold your own and be equal in this relationship and feel mm -hmm. respected in, in love. Um, love comes with me, in many different guises. We just do not know who we're going to have that spark with. Thank you so Perfect. much for your call. And thank you, Dr. E, for that wonderful advice, talking us through, you know, the biology, the feeling, the yeah. chemicals, as well as the decision. So and the heartache. And the heartache. We cannot forget that. Yes. Well, Dr. Eve, have yourself a wonderful day further, and we'll see you next week. Look forward. There we go. Bye-bye. Dr. Eve on your Feel Good Breakfast show.